Good morning. Welcome to all of those worshiping here in person and those online to this fourth Sunday of Epiphany. I have one announcement today. Um, St. Paul will be having the installation of their new pastor, Heidi Holst, on Sunday, February 5th at 3 p.m. So anyone wanting to join them for that occasion, please do so. Are there any other announcements? With that, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Give us such a hunger and thirst for justice and perseverance in striving for peace that in our words and deeds the world may see the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for today comes from Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people... What have I done to you? And what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him. 
and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 15, and we will read responsively, whole verse by whole verse. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads the flame of the fire and does what is right, must seek the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, but he honors the he has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. The second reading for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, and reduced to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that it is written Let the ones who boast, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord.
Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you.
something very big, something very heroic, something spectacular and extraordinary, a sacrifice that will clearly get God's attention and cause him to take notice of us. What were the people asking at the time of Micah? With what shall I come before the Lord? With burnt offerings, with yearling calves, thousands of rams, rivers of oil? Shall I even sacrifice my firstborn son in atonement for my sins? As we know that child sacrifice was practiced in many of the nations surrounding Israel, so uh, as they uh, sought to win the favor of their cruel and rapacious gods. No, clearly Israel's God didn't want him to that. Even if at one point he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, But in the very asking of these questions, there is a realization that there is no way possible to repay God for all that God has done for his people. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefit to me, says the psalmist in Psalm 100. A song that is sung in some churches says, you can't keep God giving no matter how hard you try. So, before we even ask the question, what does God want from us, we need to recall what God has done for us. The people of Israel should have been very well aware as they remembered and looked back on their past history. And the Lord, through the prophet, first asks them a rhetorical question. Oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. In other words, why do you And goes on to remind them, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent before you Moses and Aaron and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Barak of Moab devised and what Balaam son of Beor answered him. We need a little history on that, I guess. This was at the time when the people were still traveling through the desert under the leadership of Moses and had come close now to the border of the promised land, Balak, king of Moab, hired Balaam, the soothsayer. He was actually a, a Magos. Um, we heard back on Epiphany of the Magos
confess our faith together using the words of the Apostle Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the prayers, you're invited to stand, sit, or kneel. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, cultivate humility in your church. Teach us to boast only in the cross. Shape your church to be people of kindness, generosity, and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The foundations of the earth bear witness to your faithfulness. The mountains and hills echo with your holiness. When we mistreat your creation, show us the error of our ways. Inspire us with reverent awe to honor you all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You make foolish the wisdom of the world. Raise up honorable leaders who seek justice, love mercy, and pursue peace. Frustrate plans that are corrupt, wicked, and self-seeking. Prosper the work of peacemakers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whom the world rejects. Accompany those who are regarded as foolish, weak, low, and despised. Reveal your power at work where it is least expected. Give your life, strength, and wisdom to all in need, those in need of healing and recovery, especially those we name silently or aloud. We continue to lift up in prayer Darlene Spallett, Christine Schweitzer, Harry Redmond, Anne Rowan, Jerry Toot, Billy Eckenrode, Ruth Naud, who was taken to St. Joseph's Hospital this morning. We pray for her especially. Andrea Heslin, Patty Wentworth for full recovery from her injury. For all others on this Emmanuel prayer list, as well as all those listed on our public prayer list, we pray the Lord to look upon this world and nation of ours in such bitter need in so many ways and places. And for any others that we may name aloud or silently. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Protect those in any kind of danger. Help all who seek to address the epidemic of violence and wanton lawlessness, whether in our city, state, nation, or anywhere in the world. Bring peace to Ukraine, the Holy Land, India, and many other areas of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As with your people, Israel, remind this congregation of your saving acts. Remind us how your faithfulness brought us through difficulties and sustained us despite our weaknesses. May the cross of our Savior ever be the center of our life together. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Praise to you for your blessed saints in every time and place. Trusting you accompanied them in poverty, persecution, and every trial. We trust that you abide with your people always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> And we also commend 
to the mercy of God and to the rest, blessed rest of God's people, the soul of Mary Yeager. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, <clears throat> O lover of souls and of your whole creation, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ our Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace as you are able. give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful Father, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. <laughs>
Almighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham and Sarah, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, <clears throat> we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Then now we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, our risen Lord, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, with Mary, the Virgin Mother of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, with the holy apostles Peter and Paul and all the saints, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. <laughs> Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. When we drink this cup, we share the blood of Christ. Reveal yourself to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, as long as you introduce yourself to the disciples.
the body of Christ.